for our Dream Master cast. Come on, that's your, that's your cue, let's go. Well, you win. 
No, but I know a lot of people that were involved behind the scenes. Oh, okay. Well, I, I, I wrote it on TV. It was a wonderful movie. I, I, I just wanted to see it. <laughs> I would see it again. So, you are hilarious. I was? Yes. <laughs> I don't even remember the movie. <laughs> you know, it. It, 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 in a way, I got to watch it. I, now I'm putting it on my schedule, so I'll, I don't know what else to say. Except that, you know, I have a comic book. I just wrote a comic book, and we're going to do a film of it. So come by my table and pick up my comic book. So and I'm going to pass this on to the great powerful Mr. Allen. Hi, Ryan. Can you please tell us about Elvira, Ira? <laughs> The coolest kid in the whole wide world. Uh, is she as wife. kind as everyone says? Uh, she was very kind. She was so witty. Um, had a great time auditioning for it. She was there at callback. There was like 30 of us. Chris Cam and I went to lunch and came back for the audition again. Um, but she was awesome. And then I remember working on the show at Warner Brothers at 5 a.m. at early call. And I'm walking to Crafty to get a coffee. It's early. And I hear blasting out of a trailer, Welcome to the Chippewa! <laughs> Guns N' Roses just blasting my crew there. Of course, it's Cassandra Peterson. Um, she's just an amazing person. We still text to this day, jokes back and forth. Um, yeah, like Happy Halloween, Cassandra. And she writes to me, you're my breast friend. <laughs> well, she's, she's awesome. And I got to work with Edie McClure. Yes. It was yeah. great. Radical. So many legends in that movie. So many legends in that movie. And up and coming stars. I mean, I'm a big swing music fan. Bobby Morris and <laughs> Big Pat Voodoo Daddy in it. And I was like, yes. Happy. Yeah. Tell us about fire in the sky. About what? Fire in the sky. I know, know that it's like back to back. It's hard for us yeah, to hear. Yeah, I can't. I can't hear. So, um, the, the experience, I've been very fortunate that a lot of the films that, that you know, that I was just talking about, you really bond and have a great group of people. I've been fortunate in most of the things that I've done to have. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah we can hear you. So, I mean, the best part about it. Sky was, you know, a crick show this year. And uh, we had done a film uh, before uh, Fire to the Sky uh, called Eye of the Storm. And that's where we met. And we played brothers. We got to work with Dennis Hopper, who we both really, really were excited to work with. And then when uh, the way a lot of these films work, I think you know that they want the biggest star names they can get for the roles, you know, and then it kind of trickles down to the other characters. And so I've, I've been fortunate to do both lead roles and characters. And so I had met Bob Lieberman, the director, to play Bobby. And, but he was really trying to get somebody to play Travis Walton. So uh, my friend River Phoenix was up for the part, and Ethan Hawke was up for the part, and they were really focusing on who they were gonna get. At that point, Craig Sheffer had gone in for, uh, Dallas, to play Dallas, and I was waiting, you know, I was like calling my agent, did I get it, did I get it? And I'm like, well, he really likes you, and you know, you're you're up there with the choices for it, but no, they haven't made a decision yet. And then when Craig Shepard went, um, you know, a couple more callbacks, um, I had, we had connected and talked, you know, and I said, yeah, I'm up for this movie. He goes, oh yeah, I'm probably gonna play Dallas in that movie, because I'm going to meet with them. Uh, again, you know, so he went and when he said to Rob Lieberman, he said, hey, my buddy Bradley's up for Bobby, what's up with that? He goes, oh yeah, he's playing Bobby. And he goes, well, why don't you tell him? And then, like, a couple days later, I got the part in uh, Ryan Scott. Aww. But, you know, lifelong friendships. Uh, Henry Thomas is a very, very cool guy. Um, but that's the best part of that. The movie's really cool. I think, it, I think it's a really underrated film. I think it's a really, really cool film at that time, uh, probably should have done a lot better, you know, as far as, I know they have these fan base, but I, I feel like it should have been bigger, you know, you know, but very cool. Yeah. And Robbie. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Robbie. 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 Hi,
So you were in one of the few times I actually enjoyed your reunion, and that was I spit on your grave. Yes. Can you tell us how that came into your life? Like a thunderbolt. Um, I was, uh, um, it was actually, uh, I, uh, I had just done uh, um, uh, two independent films. Uh, uh, things were going really well. And, um, and I got a meeting uh, to, uh, I, I basically got offered part in the movie uh, I decided to go have coffee with the director, and um, and the movie, the script was entitled "Day of the Woman," mm -hmm. and I read it, and I was just blown away. I thought it was super powerful, uh, really dark, but really uh, super tight little script, and um, and I went and met with. Uh, Stephen Monroe, who's an incredible, incredible director. And um, coffee went great. And, um, and uh, that night, I uh, went home. And uh, my neighbor in the, uh, in the apartment building I lived in, uh, I, I was talking to him about it. He was a big film buff. And uh, I lived right uh, on uh, Franklin and won't mean anything, but I, I basically live where they have the Academy Awards, uh, but sort of behind that, where the dumpsters are. Um, <laughs> and uh, true story, uh, uh, Spider-Man lived in the garage downstairs. I had pictures to prove it. Um, so I was telling my neighbor, uh, yeah, I, I think I'm gonna get this job. Uh, and uh, I told him it's, it's about this, this woman uh, is raped and uh, she takes revenge on these guys and um, and, and, he, and he's going to use the computer. And he says, uh, what's it called? It's called Day of the Woman. And he goes, Rodney, that Day of the Woman. I, I think that's the original title of I Spit on Your Grave. But no, no. <laughs> this is called Day of the Woman. Day of the Woman was the original title. <laughs> uh, so I didn't even know what I was getting into uh, in, until I knew what I had gotten into. And, uh, you know, it was, which was uh, an incredible um, acting experience because uh, the, 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 the scenes in that movie, you really had to go for it. Um, and. The ensemble cast was incredible, and uh, it, it took a lot of trust. And uh, we were out in the bayou of Louisiana, and um, and it was one of, one of the most rewarding acting experiences I've ever had, uh, which is uh, hard to say about uh, that subject matter. Um, but uh, you know, it was uh, it early. Uh, aggressive, agro-feminist piece. And uh, it, I think it's one of the, the most underrated films I've ever worked on. And I, I know that one day it will find its, its place in the pantheon of great horror. And it is one of the few remakes that is fucking way better than the original. Yeah. Yeah. It's a real movie, it's very tight. They definitely didn't ruin it like they do with a lot of these remakes, right? Nightmare on the Street. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> Wait, do we have some Nightmare on Elm remake fans in here? Get out! <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. Not okay. you. <laughs> okay, do we have any audience questions? I know we must. Thank you. 
I was working on a movie. Um, while working on Nightmare, I found out that I booked a job called Legally Yours, which I got to play Rob Lowe's brother. Oh, wow. Peter Bogdanovich directed. And this was being shot in St. Augustine, Florida. And I missed the premiere. So I ended up going to see the movie with some cast friends. It was really cool. That was my first experience seeing it in the movie. And then there were a couple people that saw me, recognized me. One little girl was, gee, God, will you die? <laughs> so it was, it was really cool to get to see it. And I saw it with Kim Myers, who was in Nightmare on Street too. Because she was in Illegal New York, that's how we met. I was too busy watching myself. <laughs> They put uh, they put a uh, they put boards over the pool and they had a giant uh, it was like a giant outdoor uh, movie theater mm -hmm. and they played Nightmare on Elm Street three and four was it three, it was just three. Just we, three. Are, we all okay, we all here and wow. I, I got to announce uh, I, I got to announce I, I did a mic drop and everything it was pretty incredible wow I was mellow back then. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and that, but I bring that up because uh, all these years later, uh, it was amazing. It was the first time I ever got to see the movie being presented to like the diehards, you know, the true fans. And uh, it forever changed the way that I felt about like being in this movie. I used to be embarrassed that I ran off for three. It was like the most recognizable thing on my on my resume, you know, back in the 80s, uh, you know, it was like, uh, it was like sitcoms, porn, horror. <laughs> and, um, and, 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 but you know, it's like, now it's like being embarrassed that I, like, the most recognizable thing is like The Godfather, you know? Yeah. It's, it's become so iconic, I'm so proud of yeah. uh, of having a little chunk of, of this iconic uh, film. No, not this one. Oh, no, this is yeah, but, but. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really glad to be here, Bill. Yeah. Okay. But I'm, he's not here, he, but I, he I, never I'm still glad. Yeah. I'll tell you something really weird. Like, after it came out, and it was a really big deal in New York City, and they had those mounted police and everybody beating you know, people back in the theater and stuff. I, I wasn't there, but I was around there. And then one day, I don't know what I was doing, but somebody jumped out and grabbed a piece of my hair. You know, like in the old days where they used to like go crazy. And somebody wanted a piece of my hair, and they uh, and I didn't know what was going on. And then I heard it was because my hair was such a big deal. It's pretty funny. Nowadays, all they have to do is just check my shower grade. They'll get all the hair. <laughs> so, I just think the eighties was just a fun time for horror. It was just so one of the yeah. best times. The eighties. We go back to the eighties. It was a fun time. The eighties. You went to the movies. Not only did you enjoy the movie, you enjoyed the actors. You enjoyed the score, the music, and everything. It was like a big horror dance. And, so, Do you think you could do mine on Sunday?
<laughs> it, it did not take two minutes to put on my bed. It took a lot. Brian? Hi. Hi, Brian. Everybody knows Brian. Brian, everybody, this is Brian. Brian. Relationship with your characters. Do you love your characters as much as we do? And something specifically for Rodney, young man. <laughs> in the the uh, Never Sleep Again documentary, you mentioned that a lot of uh, prepubescent and uh, pubescent boys wrote you about the naked nurse scene and said, uh, "Yeah, this uh, made me realize I was interested in women." <laughs> well, kind of did something different to me. So thank you. <laughs> It's so hard to be sober. So hard. So hard. <laughs> so that's all I can say about my character. But I sometimes I think like, you know, because I've always enjoyed myself. And then, you know, when you try to, you get to a certain age and you have to stop enjoying yourself as much. <laughs> lordy, lordy, lordy. I had no idea. <laughs> But anyway, so, you know, with that, you know, it's, I have a sober coach now, and then, but sometimes I make a mistake, so that's, that's okay, you know, but so anybody who ever struggles with that, just, you know, all my, my heart goes out to I, you. I made mistakes when it comes to, to sobriety, also, I forgot my key this time, so anybody, <laughs> There's some sold on the table. Oh, okay. That's the first place I visit. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> a little pipe. Thank you for your uh, for your compliment. Oh, and, yeah. and, your, and your comment. Uh, <laughs> my friends and I actually have a, 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 a saying. And, uh, and you know, if, if you're hot, that's one thing. But if you're gay hot, that's another thing. Because. <laughs> <laughs> Gays have the best taste in uh, art, and fashion, and music. So if, uh, if, if the gays like you, you're, you, you got something going. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and that's right. and uh, it's funny, I think that, um, I think something that you just sort of touched on, it, um, it was, uh, you, you know, your sort of struggles with, the, with or without sobriety. And, and uh, you know, my character uh, didn't speak, and I'm sure you can tell that uh, that's exactly how I still am today. <laughs> uh, but that's exactly that's exactly how I was then. Um, I had a whole inner world, and a whole inner dialogue that uh, I had no idea how to release, how to express. And um, I think I think that's something that you know all of us uh, could could touch on. You know, I, I think we all got cast for a reason. You know, um, I know it's very early in all of our careers, and uh, there was a reason that uh, we all fit into those slots. And I I I, I didn't realize it really that it's sort of the horror of Breakfast Club until. <laughs> And, and, and like you said, there's something for every uh, every person, every personality trait uh, is sort of represented, and it's uh, you know pretty pretty great to be you know uh, not to be all you know right, but it, it, it's it's great to be uh, sort of uh, represented. Uh, um, I don't know to be saying something about mental health. Uh, Long before it was cool. Right. Yeah. 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 So, Rachel, good, good, good comment. The Breakfast Club. 
who were you in the heart? Like, what character were you? Bradley had a neck. Who do you think you would be? Uh, Ali Sheedy. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a question in the back somewhere. Yeah. It was the feathers in the padded room because when we started screaming, we realized after a scream, you inhale. <gasps> and that's when you stuck in the feather. So you had to scream, but kind of like, oh, there's, you know, there's shit in the air. <laughs> so that was the most real dangerous, I think. And the stinky pig. Well, the pig, I mean, it didn't do anything, but it stung. <laughs> I would say, I would say after all these years, um, in those early years, in the 80s, breathing in the uh, big smoke of the room, um, I don't know how healthy that was, and gluing all the stuff in, and on, the, on my skin, and the toxicity of everything, I mean, I think, you know, this isn't the only film that that kind of stuff went on, but, uh, you know, it's kind of, you know, bad as well. Uh, in, uh, in part three, it was definitely um, it, the shot where uh, the bed drops out from below me and it spins around. They did that by uh, building a room sideways. And so the bed was about uh, where this ceiling is. And I was standing uh, tied like this. Oh, wow. wow. Very Jesus Christ superstar. <laughs> <laughs> And then they pulled the camera out and spun the camera as they were pulling out. Yeah. Um, and, and it was, uh, you know, um, what was his name? Uh, the cameraman. Oh. Roy, Roy. Roy, Roy Wagner. Roy Wagner. Roy Wagner, great cameraman, really ahead of his time. And, um, and you know, the, uh, they use a lot of really hot lights on set. And, um, and, and that position, uh, you know, maybe joke about Jesus Christ Superstar, but that's uh, being tied up in, in, uh, in that kind of pose is what kills people when they would crucify them. The, eventually, the, the exhaustion and starvation, uh, they didn't have the energy to pump blood to their extremities any longer. And uh, the, the, you know, the punctures and from the nails, uh, the, the blood pressure would just drop so low that eventually all the blood would go to their heart and basically their heart would explode. Right. Mm. And, uh, and, and I was up there for about a day and a half. Oh my God. And um, uh, not all at once, they let me sleep. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I, I must have passed out four times while I was up there. And I didn't even know it, you know? Uh, Thankfully, those tongues like were tied really tight. Um, oh my God. And then, uh, and then my actual death in part four um, in the waterbed. Uh, that was a, a waterbed built on top of the platform, like like this stage. And uh, the walls and walls here on the other side uh, was the other half of the bed. And the only way to get into the bed was to dive under the wall and come up inside the bed. And uh, the safety standards were non-existent. So the only way you could get any breath was to stick your face up against plastic and find the air bubble. And, um, and also, uh, I don't think they checked the, um, the, the leakage level on the on the glue that they held the whole thing together with, so uh, it was full of uh, sort of toxic, burning poisons, and um, it was really I didn't have to act at being scared shitless, and 
And you know, I always say that, that they, um, you know, they hire all these uh, teenagers for horror films for a reason. Yeah. You know, because they're desperate for attention and they'll do anything. <laughs> it was also pretty dangerous when I'd go off that tower. Yeah. yeah. I mean, kind of. I, I was like, they wow. had a stunt man. I dove off a high platform, but not as high. Wow. The only scary thing that happened to me, other than meeting all these people, <laughs> um, Freddie's glove was the blade was supposed to retract on my desk. You know, they weren't working, so they put a two by four. So Robert actually had to hit the mark without killing me. Wow. And, and, and also, uh, a dangerous thing is when I uh, pulled you out of the bed. Yes. And, uh, and I swing him around, and you can see it in, in part three. When I swing, swing him around, I like smack his ankles against the metal table. That's when you hit me. Ow! Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> Get out of here. You don't realize. Get out! Get out! Yeah. So, now that I feel sorry for actors nowadays. They have to react to blue screen. We, uh, we didn't have to act much at all. We found blue screen. Yeah, blue yeah. yeah. Wow. That was pretty, pretty crazy. It's borderline <laughs> snuff film. <laughs> <laughs> what about when we were hanging on the thing? Like we were hanging in like a dream sequence? Like we hanging from. I remember hanging from. That, you, that was you and Chuck Russell. I think that was his. Yeah, yeah. That was your job. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Had anything to contribute to that? Me? I was, I was, you were in there with the feathers. Yeah, I was, I was only scared the chicks stopped coming. <laughs> <laughs> the, the feathers, I did not understand really what they was uh, telling us to do. So when the knives started coming in, I was really scared. I was saying, oh shit, you know. Because <laughs> we didn't know, it, you know, because they were going back and forth telling us what we need to do. And so when it, and then it starts throwing all those feathers up in there, and it started cutting for real, and that, all that was real. We wasn't acting then. Wow. You know, and so, and then we really shocked. So, but we were supposed, we were supposed to stay in the center. But, you know, some of the guys who was cutting forgot what the center was. <laughs> wow. So, they were acting really close. So we, for me, we was acting when they said, cut. And we would watch it. Yes. Oh, no. We can't do anything twice, though. We could only do it once. That was the pressure. Wow. We have time for one more audience question. Do we have any in the back over there? Yes.
auditions, I had seen the first one, didn't see the second time there. Was scared shitless of the first one, but I knew that my character as the Dungeons and Dragons, like I knew that all so well. And I heard I got the part. And I went out with my best friend, may he rest in peace, Harold Pruitt. We went to Sushi on Sunset. Super excited. I was jazzed. See Bradley, and I said, dude, you have to go and audition for this movie. And he did. Um, it was a time I'll never forget. Radical. Yeah. Uh, as for me, uh, I did not know what Black Girl Next Street was. I never seen any other movies. And so there was this thing called the breakdown, and they described the characters that you they were looking for. And the character that they was looking for didn't fit. So my agent wanted me to go out anyway on the day that it was raining, I had to go to court. So I didn't want to be there. To make a long story short, I walked into the audition with an attitude because I didn't want to be there. And Chuck Russell asked me what I thought, and I told him a black actor would say this shit. And so, <laughs> because originally, Ken K was for a white actor. All the guys out there were showing their body, and I was looking at my body. I got the Pillsbury Doughboy, you know. So I was like, what am I doing here? It was raining. I was trying to get home. I went in there. He said, well, do it as you would do it. So I cussed. I didn't cuss them out, but I cussed, you know, them out. And so he told me, okay, thank you. Yeah. So I caught my bus and went home. My agent called me. This is what the hell did you do? I said, I told you I didn't want to go. He said, they love you. <laughs> Word to the wise, that didn't work well when I went to the next audition. <laughs> wow. I just love the early part of my career because all that teenage angst just went right into every part I ever did. I, I mean, I think, I, I think we're getting close to wrapping this up. And, uh, am I right? I don't want to take your job. Um, I think, uh, I, I just think what, what Ken says is, uh, you know, uh, the moral of the story is be yourself, you know? I don't think any of us try too hard to get this job. And I've got probably close to 100 credits on IMDb and and I didn't really try very hard to get any of them. Um, you know, the ones that I tried really hard for, I, 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 I've got it memorized, I know I'm gonna get this, like I nailed it, never get the job. Aww. The job where I go and I, I don't care that much about it, or I'm, I'm not that well prepared, or, <laughs> What, what I'm saying is when it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And uh, all of us are sitting up here uh, because we're meant to be sitting here, you know? And and all and I think what speaks, what speaks most to that is all those jobs I've had as an actor, you always say at the end of a movie, man, we're gonna be friends forever. You know, because you're working with people on the set, it's a real thoughtful sort of, camaraderie and, and, uh, and a real sort of band of, of brother and sisterhood and, 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 and I don't end up having dinner with any of those people. Uh, but I can't count the number of dinners I've had with these people right here. I can. Well, yeah, but you, cause, cause you never come to dinner, you know? That's the one that's I, you know, I would think back off what Roger said that, you know, what you get for you, you get it. But that was, what, 30, I believe it was 30, 37 years ago. So I would like to say that that was 37 years ago, what was meant was meant. But 37 years later today, we're here because of you. Yeah. And you put us up here, and I thank you. <laughs> I have one more wrap up question for you guys. Um, besides, don't fall asleep. If you could give your character a piece of advice, what would it be? 
avoid the orderly. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from the med cart. <laughs> Don't run it, Freddy. Use your powers far away. <laughs> Don't hang out with your friend. <laughs> Take your back ass back to the